Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and uh, today I'm going to go through a few spring fishing perch tips. Um, we're currently in the UK on coronavirus lockdown so there's no fishing for the next well, at least probably two weeks I'd imagine. Um, but when we do get back on the bank soon enough it'll probably be around April time and those perch are as big as they're ever going to get for the whole year. So there's a distinct possibility of you catching a nice PB when they're pre-spawn. Um, however, because the water's cold but the sun starts coming out, it can be a little bit of a funny time of year and there's a few tips that I really, really want to pass over because it should get you a few extra bites. Um, the main theme that it's based around is being able to suspend the lure with very little or no movement mid-water uh, for minimum a few seconds. Okay, so there's three types of presentation that I like using for springtime perch fishing. There are obviously times when you'll probably catch them on a straight retrieve, you'll catch them on a jig head, you'll catch them fishing more aggressively. But what I found is the sort of the weather tricks us a little bit. The sun comes out, you feel the warmth on your face, you think, oh brilliant, the water's warming up, everything's going to be going crazy. It's not. The water takes a lot longer to warm up. Uh, and those perch are probably still going to be a little bit lethargic and a little bit cold. The water's still probably only about eight, eight degrees, eight and a half degrees. So it is going to be cold and you do have to try and slow down a little bit. And a suspended lure can be absolutely magic. So the three types of presentation that I use are um, a Carolina rig. So we've got Carolina weight and I'll go through all of these with my preferred lures as well. Um, a springtime crankbait, so there's a couple from the Westin range that we'll go through, and a drop shot, okay? So you probably see that there. All of these have in common the fact that you can suspend the lure. So when you're Carolina rig fishing, obviously you've got the weight on the bottom, yeah? So anything from, if I'm fishing small canals, maybe a just a little two ounce, uh, sorry, a two gram uh, little bullet weight, all the way up to if I'm trying to get distance on a big gravel pit, maybe anything up to 15 or 20 grams. But very, very simple. Thread it onto the line, it moves up and down the line, which gives very, very little resistance, a small bead, and then a swivel. And then normally I start around, around about 50 centimeters, about two foot from a hook length, and then I'm through to a, um, an offset hook. Now my number one lure for fishing in the spring with this style is the Westin Hollow Tees and I'll show you the reason why. So at the moment, the Hollow Tees, as the name suggests, has got a nice big hollow cavity right in the center of it. Now in the packet, you'll also notice here that it comes with, I've used most of them already, but it comes with a small foam insert, okay, like this. Now what I really, really love to do is, takes a little bit of time, it's a bit like critically balancing a boily in the edge if you're fishing for carp, but I like to trim a little bit off, around about a centimetre, maybe 15 mil, and I'll put that inside the lure, and that adds just a little bit of buoyancy. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to counteract the weight of the offset hook that we've got okay so I, I will do I will spend a good five or ten minutes just putting this together I'll test it in the edge and I just want it critically balanced so when I put it in the edge it's almost just hovering you know if there's too much foam it'll sit right at the top and that can be okay because it'll be right up here but I really really I'm looking for that hover because when it, it just flops around and flutters about in the water and as it's suspending, it's absolutely killer technique. So put yourself a little bit in. And the second great thing about the hollow tees is that once I've rigged up, so with an offset hook, you put it in the nose, just a quarter of an inch or so, thread it all the way round, so it's on the nose like that, and then work out where the right hook is, and I'll put the point through. And it's brilliant because especially at this time of year as well, we're just starting to get a little bit of weed growth coming up, okay? And that's why I want this suspended lure. Now, 
the bit of foam only goes right at the front. Normally you only need about that much to counteract the weight of that hook. The rest of it has got the hollowness so that when the perch comes along, grabs the bait, it hasn't got to, you can see how easy that can squash and expose the hook. Okay, so um, you, you know, you, even the gentlest of bites will still end up with a really, really good hooking ratio. And with that little bit of foam in there, fish it really, really slow. So I'll often fish it. Um, I don't really wind in using the reel. I'll use the rod and I'll pull it to the side. So I'm really only just almost dragging or just lifting the lead off the top. This will be working the paddle tail and then I leave the lead and then I'm giving it a good count of three to 10 seconds. And this is just gonna waft and that gives that cold water, lethargic perch a time to come up, really kind of inspect the lure and just when he wants to, he can suck it in. And then normally e you either feel a tiny tick or you'll feel them the next time you go to move the rod. So be, be prepared because the bites can come at any time. But Car um, Texas, Carolina style rigging, absolutely brilliant. Next one we're gonna move on to is crankbaits. So at this time of year, the perch are probably, they're thinking about coming up spawning, but they are going to be on that sort of the edge of that deep water still. So this is my absolute favorite in the Western range. Yeah, it's the um, baby bite in the deep runner. So you can see it's got a good old bill on it. Runs down to about between two and four meters. So sort of six to 12 foot sort of range. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Anywhere in that six to 15 foot, I can fish this lure. And I, I normally cast it out, crank it right the way down until I feel myself digging in at the bottom. And then these are, these are uh, designed as a, what's called a low floating. So they are floating, but they're almost only just on the floating side of critically balanced. So really, really slowly, it's gonna be rising up to the top and often I can fish these little twitch, twitch, you know, take forever. And those bites will rarely come when you're moving the lure. They will come when it's suspended or when it's just floating up. Um, Honestly, this, the, uh, this has revolutionized my fishing because normally I like power fishing, I like fishing on the wind, I like covering water and looking for, for positive feeding fish, but this is the one time of year I have to keep telling myself to slow down, put the right methods on, and really, really, you know, really concentrate on those very slow methods that are, create a, a response from lethargic fish. The last one is a drop shot. Um, I've been using this a lot, especially in the clear uh, sort of gravel pits that I've been fishing since the rivers have been closed. Um, and what's interesting with this, if I'm fishing anywhere more than about eight or nine foot deep, I will leave a tag on here. You can probably see how long. So that's where my bait is fixed. I've probably got about 12 inches there at the moment, but my tag goes for another 12 to 18 inches. I will leave once i'm fishing eight to ten foot deep i'll leave at least a two foot tail so that if i can if i want to i can extend all the way down to the end of this line so my drop shot rig has got some real you know i'm in that clear water that we often get in the gravel pits in the spring you want to be able to hold that lure off the bottom not moving a huge amount you know twitch 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 and then let, let a little bit of slack and that, that lure is gonna fall down through the water really, really slowly, twitch, twitch, just until you feel the weight of the lead. So you're actually barely even moving the rig at times. It's what's called, what I call shaking the slack. Give it a little bit of slack, shake, 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 twitch, almost sort of hold it tight and he'll just, he'll just present there. And the number of bites that you get, I mean, just for an example, I was fishing on the Kennet and Avon Canal the other day. I've ended up with 16 perch and uh, five pike and a couple of chaps that I was out with and they were fishing jigs all day. They ended up with sort of three or four perch each. Not much. I literally sort of tripled their catch rate and I never had a bite when I was moving the lure. And that's the problem with the jig. When you've got a jig head and a big ball weight on there, you're fishing it up and it's down up and down you're moving the lure too quickly and you're only asking for bites off very aggressive fish if you come down a little bit make yourself 
a small malfunction there with the camera, but just as I was explaining, um, come down a little bit in your subtlety of your presentation, uh, suspend that lure, fish it much more slowly, and it will get you more bites in the spring. Uh, hope you catch yourself a PB. Try out these methods. So we've got the uh, Carolina rig, suspended crankbaits, and drop shot, um, and I guarantee you'll get more bites in the cold water with those spring perch. Cheers, guys, and see you on the next one.